Hello, and welcome to your first 10 minutes in Bitwig 2. The first most important thing is this dashboard. In this dashboard, we will have many options in the settings, along with a profile page, a packages page for downloading any sort of Bitwig promoted content, and a help page where you can find maybe some updated tutorials or any sort of manuals or versions. Some important tabs in the settings is the user interface, the behavior, the audio, plugins, and shortcuts, and maybe even your locations for plugins and your sound content. The most important is your plugins window, where you're going to want to set your independent plugin host processes for each plugin, rather than 32 or 64, or only as a bit bridge. You can set it as 32 or 64, but then you have to check mark the specific plugins you want to use their own host processes. If you have only as Bitbridge, this will cause sandboxing to happen in larger projects that use many VSTs as they won't have as much RAM to be run. Important in the behavior is that by default, the track volume is set to negative 10. If you don't like this, you can take this off. Also, there is a template section and then what you can do on open on start. Do you want it to open a template? Do you want to open the dashboard, new project, or your latest project? In the DAW itself, there has been a few changes people might want to look at. First of all, as you notice in my transport bar, there is barely any options, but you will see that most of these buttons actually have a little triangle. This means they can be dropped down. What's important about this is you can actually go ahead and start pinning options that you want. This will help you make a very customized toolbar. And you can notice that the options change as I move and select different things, such as a device or track. I get new settings that are relative to what it is I have selected. You can also find these settings by right clicking on the track or using this. In the top right corner, we now have the notification system that can be turned on or off. Notifications are things that are classified as something that requires like your attention, such as when bouncing a track, it will show a progress bar in the top right corner, or if you're doing a bounce in place, or if there's an update available, or any sort of news, the notifications bar will let you know. You can turn this off if you wish. An important feature to point out is that you can now right click on a device and save it as a default preset. For example, this is my default polysynth. I have removed any sort of filters and modulators that are in the actual default preset, and I've made my own that is a clean saw wave with nothing being affected. For anyone who might be new to this DAW, I need some help looking around at things. We have cursor options here in this section, labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these will all correspond to different tools. You have a clip selection tool when in the top half of a track. When you move to the lower bottom, you have a time selection tool. This applies even when there's a clip down, so you can easily drag or remove or separate parts of your track without having to press another button or come in here and search for it. The automation lanes are located underneath this mute button where you can search through all of the devices listed in the order that they're there. If I add an equalizer, the equalizer will be found after the polysynth, but before the final mixer. These two buttons here will show timeline or show clip launcher or you can turn the timeline off so it only shows the clip launchers, or you can show both. The clip launchers is a very popular way to compose music as you can record into these little clips. You can then effectively play this back. Even going ahead to edit and refine the time that it lasts. You can make multiple tracks and record into them. And once you've composed your masterpiece, you can play the scene launch button instead of the individual clip launch button. You can edit all the MIDI required down here. There's a fold option as well, along with a section for the knife and eraser and a pen and time selection tool. If you want to edit any MIDI, you simply click on the MIDI you wish to edit and it'll pop up on the bottom. If we look all the way down here, we have some little squares which represent the MIDI automation. 
and we have device chains, and then as well as a mini mixer view, or we can click on this large one and get a full mixer view. There's also a button for edit panel. This will do a full screen MIDI view, so you can automate along with it. In the MIDI editor, there is an option to remove audition piano keys for when moving around notes. There are velocity options here. This will also show timbre, pressure, gain, and panning. This only works with devices that support this, such as the native Bitwig devices. There's also micro pitch expression editing. Again, this only works with the Bitwig native devices. But here, you can now pitch bend between notes at semitones across a keyboard, similar to how FL Studio has their sliding notes. In this bottom right corner, we have the 1 16th. If we click on this, we can see that we can have the grid automatic or fixed or straight or trial. A sneaky little button is this automation follows clip when moved button. This button will basically disable or enable automation's ability to follow a clip. If it is off and I have a clip with automation and I drag it, the automation below will not follow. But if it's on, it will follow. In the editor, there is also a stacking option where you can show all the layers, including things that are grouped and across multiple instruments. You can then drag these clips onto the playlist for more musical composition. You must make sure this button is disabled to allow ranger play instead of clip play. Likewise, you can store patterns in this clip launcher if you wish to use them for later. After naming them using the info panel, we can also see this clip launcher view from the mixer in a big or small mode. If you're not into clip launchers like me, you can just remove all of that and add big metering modes so you get huge looks on your meters. Make sure to make use of Bitwig's device nesting. These are these little boxes that you can drag devices into. This is now collapsible and specifically in my polysynth. What is useful about this is most effect devices give you the option to have a wet FX insert, meaning you can add an equalizer to a wet FX and equalize it separately from the dry FX. Notice how it works. Most importantly in Bitwig 2, there's a show modulators button on every device. This opens a small tab where you can then choose from the 24 modulators. This allows you to effectively add, say, an envelope and then modulate it to any of these parameters that are green.